So I'll be looking at the role that folklorists have played in policy development and exploring how they might be involved in the future. Um, so in order to gain some insight into the policy development process, which is quite complex, I'm focusing on Newfoundland and Labrador, looking at the evolution of cultural and heritage policies in the province. So there's been a folklore department here for more than 40 years, and there were folklorists working in the province well before that. Uh, considering this, it's curious that the government didn't officially recognize the importance of the work that folklorists have been doing until the 2000s. So I'm looking at why the change occurred when it did. Folklorists haven't spent too much time analyzing policy development, and most of the writing and discussion on this front comes out of the United States. So I'll be looking at uh, some of that writing uh, and the policy development that happened there in the uh, 60s and 70s. So my research looks at various elements that came together to allow real policy discussion to happen in Newfoundland and Labrador, so changing discourse and the intersection of key personalities and institutions at critical moments. So of vital importance is the term intangible cultural heritage, which, as you all may know, came out of uh, UNESCO dialogues. So the use of this term <coughs> reframes the whole conversation. Um, back in 1989, UNESCO made recommendations for the safeguarding of traditional culture and folklore. And uh, that document talks about the tradition-based creations of cultural communities. And by 2003, the uh, language had shifted, and UNESCO drafted a convention for the safeguarding of intangible <coughs> cultural heritage. So there's a lot of overlap between these documents, and it's, it goes well beyond the um, opening definitions. There's there are great similarities between the aims and approaches that these two documents have. Um, but the differences are quite significant simply because of the words folklore and heritage and their vastly different connotations. Uh, so the first official mention of ICH in government policy here was in Creative Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, the cultural blueprint that was produced in 2006. <coughs> and the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage was one out of ten strategic directions listed for the province in that document. In that same year, there was uh, an ICH forum held in the province, supported by the government and hosted by the Association of Heritage Industries. And as a direct result of the conversations that happened at that forum, uh, the decision was taken to craft a strategic plan. And the writing of this plan and discussions about how best to implement the strategy took place over the next couple of years, and uh, in 2008, the decision was taken to create the role of ICH officer uh, to, be, to work through the uh, Heritage Foundation. So I'll be looking at where this strategy fits into debates about public sector folklore, and again, drawing heavily on what's been written about the American experience. Uh, I'll also be looking at how the strategy has been put into practice and what ICH programming in the province has achieved. So these are my key research questions. So basically I'll, just be, I'll be looking at um, the importance of the term intangible cultural heritage uh, in policy discussions, seeing how that uh, has impacted policies in the province and the work that's come out of that and looking at what, what lessons can be taken from that for the uh, broader national picture, I guess. So I've been conducting interviews and, and continuing to conduct interviews with people who are involved in these policy discussions, and I'll be using those to sort of uh, contextualize the uh, policy documents themselves and find out what went on behind the scenes, the compromise, the sort of push and pull that's involved in crafting uh, policy documents, and to uh, further, further contextualize the, uh, the ICH strategy and uh, broader cultural and heritage policies in the, in the province, the cultural blueprint and the documents that came before it, I'll be looking at uh, UNESCO and its influence. And I'll also be drawing on my personal experience. Uh, I spent a couple of months this summer working with the Heritage Foundation, which gave me a, a hands-on look at the kind of programming that's come out of the, the strategy. So drawing all these things together, I um, hope to gain insight into 
how the policies came to be and maybe future directions for ICH policy in the province.